Honourable Deputy Speaker, Committee Chairs, staff of the Majlis Secretariat and of the Westminster Foundation for Democracy and PHC colleagues as well. Salam alaikum and good morning. Thank you uh, both Arij and Honourable Salim for your thoughtful remarks. I've noticed that lawyers and speakers of the Majlis in particular always speak Duvehi very neatly and beautifully. Unfortunately for you, I only speak English neatly and beautifully, so I will stick to that. We've already uh, seen an outline of the system that we are together launching today, um, which is funded, as all WFD's work is, by the British High Commission on behalf of the UK government. I thank Westminster Foundation for Democracy for your delivery on this, and also to members of the Majlis Secretariat and all of the committee members who have been so helpful. I would like to use my speaking slot to set this particular piece of uh, support to the Majlis in the wider context of the UK's support to Maldives. Fundamentally, the UK wants Maldives to be a resilient, strong and stable country, as independent as it is possible for any country to be in this globalised world. We have been 100% behind the establishment of democracy and the protection of human rights in Maldives since the early 2000s. So our programme focuses on support to institutions responsible for maintaining the rule of law. In recent years, in the justice sector and the legislature, the Majlis, the police and the MNDF, and the Commission on Deaths and Disappearances. Importantly to us, our work is demand-led. We consider the local context and we ask people working in or served by the institutions how we can help. So what we do here is not always very visible and it doesn't often make the headlines. We do not build bridges at airports, but we do provide the expertise that helps critical national infrastructure to be safe and secure. The UK has long been providing security training, advice and equipment to Vilana International Airport, for example. Well, we regard the Majlis as a very key part of the critical national infrastructure of the Maldives. And that is why we have helped with so many internal processes, supporting the administration and committees on scrutiny and now on helping effective public consultation. Honourable committee chairs, each of you here are part of that critical national infrastructure. You hold the nation's interests in the palm of your hands. The decisions you take have implications that have a direct impact on the lives of citizens throughout Maldives. This is a huge responsibility entrusted to you. Your committees are the watchdogs of many important issues that are very much in focus at the moment. How the country's hard-earned income is spent. How your independent institutions run. The country's international relations and national security. The safety and security of your digital infrastructure and your people's personal data. The fragile biodiversity of the oceans and the shifting sands of your islands and the fundamental rights of men, women and children. The 2008 Constitution gave the Majlis a lot of power, which needs to be exercised with care and wisdom. Of course, nation building takes time and the path sometimes meanders or leads backwards when political expediency is prioritised over nation building. On that point, Paragraph 75 of the Constitution, if I have the English translation correctly, is fundamentally important. National interest and public welfare are paramount, and members represent the country as a whole, not only constituencies. We want to help your Parliament develop into a strongly accountable and respected institution. The tone set by members of the Majlis sets an example to the wider public Good conduct in public life is important. If the lawmakers don't respect the law, how can you expect anyone else to? 
That's why, alongside our support to the Majlis, we want to assist the development of the political party system in Maldives. We want to see all parties develop equally strong ethics and accountability of members, particularly those running for office. Ultimately, the most successful people in any political party will become members of the Majlis or of the executive. So once again, our objective is to increase the efficacy of the institutions. In conclusion, returning to the launch of the committee digital database, I hope those of you who return to the Majlis after the elections will find the system makes your work easier and more efficient and transparent to the public. And in the meantime, I wish those of you running for election success with your campaigns. Thank you.